Hello, this is Derek, aka DJ Baja Blast, and this is the video guide for the DJ Baja Blast MIDI Loopster. The Loopster is a portable MIDI controller and looper, a MIDI looper, I should say, designed for quick idea sketching and experimenting. Check out this link for a quick demo. All right, let's jump in. So first, gather all of the components. You can see the description for a bill of materials and links to my store where you can buy a kit if you prefer, but you can always just buy all the parts yourself. I also sell just the PCB for about 20 bucks, but even that you can make yourself via the Gerber files in the GitHub repo if you want to. So you also need the basic soldering materials, flux, solder, and a soldering iron. I mostly use a flux pin for convenience, but the liquid flux is nice if you really want to get a bunch onto a joint that just doesn't want to solder. Um, but anything should work. If you're new to soldering, just YouTube around for tutorials and you'll be fine. Everything but one part is through hole, and the only one surface mount part is about as easy as it gets. The first two parts to solder are the two key switches on the top left of the board. You have to solder these before you solder in the Raspberry Pi Pico, or else you can't get to these pads. So it's best to just do it from the start so you don't forget. I solder them one at a time while just holding them in place with my finger. Next, solder in the Raspberry Pi Pico. This goes in the back and the USB port should be facing the edge of the board. If yours doesn't have headers on already, go ahead and solder those on first. The easiest way to do that is to plug the headers into a breadboard, stick the Pico on the headers, solder them in, and then yank the whole thing out. That's the easiest way to solder headers on straight. I use liquid solder here, uh, made quite a mess, but some strong isopropyl alcohol at the end will help clean this off. Now just go down the line and solder all of your pins. And this might be a bigger deal when soldering the headers onto the board. Um, but just make sure you don't heat a single pin up for too long. If the solder isn't taking after three or four seconds, just back off and let the pin cool before trying again. And I sometimes alternate sides of the board while I'm soldering just to make sure that too much heat doesn't build up in one place. Uh, if you aren't confident in your soldering skills, you could always solder in a female header here and then just plug the male headers into this. And that way if you fry the microcontroller, you can just pop in a new one. They are pretty annoying to desolder. I don't know that I've ever successfully desoldered one. All right, now solder in the resistors and capacitors on the right side of the board. The resistors are all 10K and the capacitors are 0.1 microfarad. I like to stick all of the components in and then solder from the front of the board to avoid the mess of bent leads on the back. And then I just come in and clip the leads off in the back and clean up any joints as needed. Next comes the encoder. So the encoder goes in the top right of the board and the only place that it'll fit. Um, so go ahead and solder that in. And just note that the two metal tabs in the middle of the encoder on the sides are just for mechanical support. So they aren't strictly necessary to solder, but you definitely should to get good mechanical support. Now on to the one and only surface mount part, the aux jack. This is used to send MIDI out to other gear, uh, aka not USB MIDI. Um, to use this, you will need some sort of 3.5 millimeter to MIDI cable converter. So to solder this, just put some flux on the pads. I use the pen here, the, uh, the flux pen, and uh, place the part down. And just kind of hold it in place with your finger while you tack it in place with a little bit of solder. 
on the tip of your soldering iron just to keep it in position. And then once it's tacked in place, you can go back around the other pads and solder them and then clean up the, the first pad. Now I'll solder in the rest of the resistors. The 33 ohm resistor goes near the top of the board and the 10 ohm near the bottom. These are part of that MIDI out circuit. Now it's time to take care of the rest of the key switches. I haven't really perfected a strategy here, but the tape option that's shown here works pretty well if you're careful. You could also do them one at a time and hold them in with your finger, like we did the first two, but it just takes a little longer. Finally, let's add the screen. This goes on last because it's the most delicate part. So solder in the female headers if you're using them onto the top of the board. You don't have to, but they're kind of nice to have for a few reasons. One is that if you end up breaking the screen, uh, it's a little easier to fix. You can just pull the old screen out and stick a new one in. And the other thing is that it pushes the screen up and more in line with the other components. Otherwise, if you solder it straight to the board, it kind of looks low and sunken in compared to the buttons and the encoder, but it doesn't really matter. And now just plug the screen in and you're done. Now that everything's assembled, it's time to load the firmware and test it. So for this, I'll kind of show you on the screen here, but really just check this link, the Getting Started Guide for Raspberry Pi Pico and CircuitPython. Essentially, you just hold the boot button on the Pico, or the reset button, I don't remember which is which, um, but hold the button on the Pico, and then plug it into your computer and it should show up as a USB drive type device in Finder Explorer. And then you download a UF2 file from circuitpython.org and drag it to the Pico. And that's about it. Your Pico should think for a second, um, disconnect from your computer and then reconnect and then show up as a different device name. And you'll know this worked if you click that device and inside it you see a code.py file. So now we have the firmware or the, um, I guess, operating system if you want to think of it that way, loaded onto the Pico, but we need the mini controller software. So for that, go to the linked GitHub repo and download it. And then you basically just delete everything from your Pico. Copy everything from the source folder, SRC folder, from the GitHub files you just downloaded. And drag all of that to the root directory of your Pico. So after it transfers over, your file structure should look like this in the root directory. And at this point the screen should turn on, but if not, just unplug the device and plug it back in. Um, the way CircuitPython works is basically every time something changes, it reloads the device and runs code.py. So if you were to go in and edit code.py and just save it, you'll see the device reset. And I'm not gonna get too far into the programming side here, but this is one of the reasons that I like CircuitPython is that it treats your microcontroller like a USB drive, making it super easy to get files onto and off of it. So that code.py file that you see is essentially what runs whenever the device is plugged in. And then here's just a quick side note. If you wanna customize the code, just open it up in any editor and go wild. Um, again, code.py is what runs when the device starts up, so that's a good place to start if you want to see how things are working. And also note that I'm not a programmer by trade, so if you know what you're doing and you think I did something in a weird way that doesn't make any sense, you're probably right. And if that happens, uh, feel free to enter an issue on GitHub 
that would be much appreciated. All right, thanks for uh, watching this build guide for the Loopster. Um, check out the description for a link to the user guide, the written user guide. Check out uh, this video for a demo of some of the screens and things that you can do with the device. And have fun, you know, send me anything you make with it. I would love to see it. Peace.